This learning objective explains airborne uh, photography and LiDAR data. So airborne images and photos are taken using airborne cameras and these are the cameras that are installed on aeroplanes, aircrafts um, and more traditionally uh, they could have been on a balloon as well. It's a very, it was a popular in early years of 20th century uh, and actually during that era the, the discipline of photogrammetry was also um, uh, introduced which is the science of measuring geometry of the earth um, using photos and presently there are many uh, still uh, airborne missions that are deployed but at the same time this also serves as a source of historical data as well uh, as you can see these two images um, from um, airborne uh, cameras correspond to old Las Vegas. Here is a, a more newer version, a newer version of the camera, uh, a digital camera that is used for airborne uh, photography. Um, airborne photography is routinely used in small scale studies, um, including urban planning and management, construction, engineering, agriculture, forestry, wildlife man management, and mapping. When we talk about aerial photography cameras, um, we uh, have two types of cameras. A camera is an optical device used to capture and record images. So in a camera, a lens captures the uh, image of a ground surface onto uh, a thin uh, recording surface. And this recording surface um, varies based upon the time of type of the camera. So in film cameras, this recording surface is a plastic film coated by a photosensitive material. And the image is projected onto that photosensitive material for a small duration of time and recorded. In case of digital cameras, this surface is called charged couple device, which is um, a semiconductor material which has the capability to record the projected electromagnetic radiation. And in both of these cases, the image of the ground surface is captured on the uh, photograph. On, on the photograph. And um, some of the things that we need to consider when we are looking at aerial photographs or aerial image is images is the image scale and extent. The scale relates distance over the image to that on the ground. We have talked about scale in the context of um, maps. Extent is the physical ground area covered by an image. So it could be um, a, a small neighborhood or if it's a high altitude aeroplane it could be a whole city. The image resolution is the size of the smallest object that can be reliably detected. And it, this is related to um, typically the pixel size of the image. That's the smallest object that we can see. Um, additionally, we can, all, we can also describe the quality of the image um, based upon its geometric and radiometric distortions. The geometric distortions are the errors in the locations um, and shapes of objects in the image. Um, for example, if we um, were looking at an orthographic view, in which case the source is at infinity, um, then we should be looking at buildings as only the, the footprints of the buildings. But because of the aerial imagery, the the view is perspective and so we see the sides of the buildings in the images and that introduces a geometric error which needs to be corrected. Similarly there can be radiometric distortions and these are errors in the colors of the image. The colors of the image could be because of the distortion because of the intervening uh, channels such as atmospheric errors or it could be error in the camera acquisition um, which can be the camera errors. In either case, these errors 
into uh, can impact the utility of an image. So, um, as I mentioned in the last slide, there can be perspective view errors. Um, these the correcting of those errors is called ortho rectification, or basically what we are trying to do. We we have a perspective view or perspective center and we were tr we we're trying to change the the image so that um, we make it an ortho uh, graphic view or orthogonal orthogonal projection where the the center is at infinity so in an ortho orthogonal projection if I have a relief all of these points will be projected onto a, a plane um, and the the distances the horizontal distance distances will be preserved but if my uh, center or my uh, location of the image um, has a perspective center which is not at infinity in that case these points get shifted when they are projected on the ground also called relief displacement and this introduces errors um, here is a 3d view where points a and a prime are potentially the same points from the orthographic point of view but when they are viewed from P they, uh, the the point um, is shifted and they appear to be two different points on the surface which means the point A prime should have been the actual location but it is shifted to point A similarly point um, uh, B prime should have been the actual actual location, but it is shifted to B. So this is this relief displacement uh, needs to be corrected, and it's called uh, ortho rectification. Here is an example. This building viewed from perspective view, we can see its side, and now we need to do ortho rectification on this. And what we end up seeing is just the just the footprint of the buildings and not their sides and um, this process is done uh, on photographs uh, taken from aircrafts because this is a very common error because of low altitudes. The other uh, ge sources of geometric errors are due to the aircraft attitude. The attitude of aircraft means if there is change in the the orientation of the aircraft at is, as it is flying. And here are a couple of uh, examples. Suppose this is the ground surface viewed by an aircraft. And if, 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 if the scanner is scanning this um, surface and converting those into little pixels, because of the perspective view, as we discussed earlier, um, the, the, there will be um, different pixel footprints on the ground. Um, as we go farther away, the pixel um, surface will increase and so the, the representation in the image will be different. But if there is a roll of the aircraft, which means it, it, it goes, it sways from one wing to the other wing, um, then it will introduce this wavy type of distortion in the image. On the other hand, if there is a crab dis distortion, which is the um, also called yaw, um, where the the nose of the plane kind of sh shifts in the horizontal plane. Um, it happens due to the wind uh, effect. Then the the scanning will end up becoming um, slanted, and that's another type of error. Um, lastly, there could be a pitch distortion. And in case of pitch distortion, the nose of the plane can sway up and down in the vertical plane. And that introduces changes in the pixel sizes along the flight path. All of these errors are accumulated in an image. And it is a, it's a, it's a complex, complicated task to perform geometric corrections to an image um, before it, it is useful. The aerial image can be interpreted in various ways. We can look at the tone and hue, which basically uh, tell us the information about the color and the color intensity. 
Um, we can also look at the texture of the image, which shows us uh, the which is related to how the color color and hue varies spatially and how it is related to the land surface objects. Um, if we look at the texture of the forest, um, it's the texture that tells us it is forest. And this in this case, if we look at this bare soil, it's the texture that tells us that this is not just any bare soil, it's a bladed ground. Um, this the texture of this uh, this path tells us that it's a paved path so texture tells us more on top of the color and hue then shape also tells us information so when we look at the shape of this little oval along with the blue color we know it's a pool when we look at the shape of this um this uh rectangle with tile color we know is the roof of a house. The size also tells us information in an aerial imagery. Um, and so the sizes of these trees are smaller than the sizes of these tree canopies. The shadow can tell us up, uh, about the orientation of the sun and uh, shadow can also tell us about the time of day. And uh, patterns on the ground can also tell us. So if we were if if this image was taken from even a higher altitude the pattern of the this, this color will tell us that it's a road network um, then on top of that the site overall um, site and the association within the site can also tell us more about um, the contents in an aerial image the last thing in this objective I want to talk about is the LIDAR or light detection and ranging. This is um, a device that is very popular for uh, urban planning and urban uh, uh, forest uh, detection. Even now transportation and resource de detection in the urban areas. And it's a very simple idea. It basically measures the range uh, to target and it is used to map the surface elevation variations but now it has found so many applications originally it was mapping the surface elevation anywhere but now with that information we can tell um, various features in an urban area because of the different elevations um, of rooftops compared to the um, yard compared to the roads um, and in forest they are even this technology is even used to detect uh, the the um, different types of uh, trees and characteristics of the trees and it this this technology has found a lot of applications now in geodesy archaeology geography um, and various other disciplines the basic principle behind LIDAR is um, where that a, a pulse is of light is emitted by the aircraft and it travels to the ground and wherever it hits a target it gets reflected back and then part of it it continues to move forward and then it hits another target and gets reflected back and part of it it keeps moving so until it hits the ground where most of it then gets reflected back. So a LIDAR could have multiple returns. So first return, a second return, a third return, and a fourth return. And if there was nothing on the ground, there'll be only one return. And if there are many objects along the path of the LIDAR pulse, there'll be many returns. And these returns will have different intensities based upon the, the characteristics of the object. And there can be as many as seven returns um, in a standard uh, LIDAR um, uh, data. And so based upon these returns, we can infer in three-dimensional information of the surface. And so on top of giving us the elevation of the ground, it also tells us about the features on the ground. And this is 
why LiDAR is a very rich data. It comes as a point cloud. Um, so it's not pixels, it's it's a cluster of points as, as shown here. And they're not regularly spaced, they're called irregularly spaced uh, cluster. And and these the, the point clouds um, are quite hard to process, but once you process, they have much different insight about the land surface um, and uh, the reason for its popularity to study um, uh, uh, urban areas and forests.